I hadn't originally intended to include my American History textbook as part of the set design, but guess this is the one superhero video I can get away with it in. Also, that's outdated. That is no longer Captain America. We have a new Captain America, and I want to talk about it. What is going on, everybody? My name is Ian, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Falcon and the Winter Soldier just ended, or should I say, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. That is right, obvious spoilers ahead, but in the season finale of the show, Sam Wilson officially took the mantle of Captain America, and I could not be happier about it. When Steve gave Sam the shield at the end of the Endgame, they could have just gone on to the next film Sam was appearing in and just had him already be Captain America. It would have felt rushed, but they could have done it. But no, instead we got ourselves an entire six episode miniseries about him and Bucky as Sam learned to take up the mantle of Captain America and Bucky learned to let go of the mantle of the Winter Soldier. Now coming off of WandaVision just a couple of weeks prior, for most people Falcon and Winter Soldier had a lot to live up to. For me especially, because WandaVision, as you will find out in future videos, has become probably my favorite Marvel project of all time. Going from this experimental sitcom Marvel hybrid that tackles some very deep themes and messages and gets there in very nuanced and outlandish ways to a very politically driven thriller of sorts with still the Marvel formula on top of it was a drastic change and an abrupt change at that for the MCU, but it wasn't unlike abrupt changes that the MCU had gone through before. If there is one thing the MCU knows how to do, it is jump from genre to genre and do it expertly. And this is no different. Is it better than WandaVision? I don't know, that doesn't matter. That's literally besides the point. But I will say it is just as good on a quality level. It's a very different show, obviously, but it does a lot of brave and exciting things in the same way WandaVision does, but in totally different ballparks. All right, so I have a lot to talk about today. Like I said, spoilers aplenty are ahead. I do have a list of certain topics about the show I wanna talk about, so we'll just get right into it. We got a lot to talk about today, guys. So first and foremost, I wanna talk about the episodes and how I would not necessarily rank them, but my opinions on certain episodes, what ones are the best ones, what ones are the weakest ones. I think the weakest episodes of the show are the ones that have really a lot going on. That is one of my only complaints with the show, is there are a lot of subplots here that seem totally unrelated, and of course, they have little ties to one another, but most of the plot lines in this show are rooted in characters, which is cool and definitely feels a lot like a comic book, but can get a little messy and muddled on the screen. But that's not a huge problem. I didn't mind it too much, I just think a lot of audience members probably would. But that's just the cost you pay for having so many exciting plot lines intertwining and characters coming into play. So even though there was a lot of really good stuff in it, I'd say episode 3 is probably my least favorite, or maybe 4. They feel a little messy, they're right in the middle. I would say episode 2 is one of my favorites, and then episode 5 of course, and episode 6. 2, 5, and 6 are probably my favorites in the whole series, whereas 1, 3, and 4 are kind of the weaker ones, but 1 is not bad at all. Neither is four, but three is probably my least favorite. It's not bad. There's a lot of good in it I really love seeing Madripoor. I love the introduction of Zemo and Sharon, but it, there's just a lot going on there Episode five on the other hand whew, So much good in that episode the Sam and Bucky conversation being one of my favorites in the entire show Really love the battle with them and John Walker at the beginning of the episode There's just a lot of really good stuff in that and then the finale is just Chef's kiss, beautiful, 100% amazing. Seeing Sam officially become Captain America is so well learned by the time the series is over and is so much fun to see unfold. And that's a good segue. The first thing I have to talk about is Cap himself, Sam Wilson. Now, I know a lot of people talked about like going into WandaVision, they weren't the biggest Wanda and Vision fans, and then the show managed to turn Wanda and Vision into some of their favorite Marvel characters. Now, not to brag or anything, but going into WandaVision, I was already a huge Wanda and Vision fan, but then of course the show only made me more so. Going into Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I liked both Sam and Bucky, but I wasn't the biggest fan of them. But now, having come out of it, I absolutely adore them. Sam just fits the mantle of Captain America so well. It feels like something was always kind of missing from him being Falcon, and it's clear that that's because he was always destined to be Captain America. Now, I was never really too attached to the Captain America mantle. I always loved Steve Rogers. I thought Steve was great, but as far as Captain America as a superhero goes, was never really that attached to him, actually. But you put Sam behind the shield, and you give him a pair of wings, and suddenly I adore the man. Dude, he is so cool, and his entrance is one of my favorite 
favorite scenes in the entire series. One of my favorite MCU scenes, if we get down to it. I mean, I'm talking like top 15, top 20, not like top 10 or anything. But still, it's really high up there. I so love how they did that. The score, the way it rises up, the little lens flare that happens. It feels so comic booky, but also so well realized. I don't know. It was just super satisfying to see him throughout the show grapple with the difficulty of taking up the shield. Obviously, there are difficulties to it that Steve never had and that Steve is never going to understand or anyone else like John Walker. Some people were saying this show was too political, too pushy with its agenda, but those people are the problem. Hate to admit it. Captain America is literally a superhero named after a country. His stories are always by nature going to be political. If you have a problem with that, that just don't watch them. But you can't go into a Captain America show and not expect politics. Okay. Some people, guys. I actually think that aspect of the show was really well done. I think it felt very natural and genuine, more so than in many shows or movies that try and tackle the topic. I mean, it's not the greatest out there, it's not the most profound exploration of these themes, but it also does a really good job at it and tackles it from angles that only a superhero TV show can do. Isaiah Bradley was such a cool addition. I almost cried at the end when he finally got the memorial. That was such an earned and just so profound moment for not only Sam, but for the history and legacy of super soldiers. It's just so great. And Sam in this show has worked his way up to being one of my favorite Avengers. I think he's so fun. I, like I said, I wasn't the biggest fan of him in prior MCU installments, but even in just the first episode, like long Long before he even took the mantle of Captain America. Something about the way Anthony Mackie performs him here, or the way he's written, or the way he's directed, is just a couple steps up from how he was in other MCU entries, for whatever reason, and I just really loved him. Alright, moving on. Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier. I really, really, really love what they did with Bucky in this show. Sebastian Stan is wonderful. Again, I wasn't the biggest fan of Bucky prior to this show. I knew lots of people were, but I never really was too obsessed with him. But here... This dude is so likable, and he compliments Sam so well. They have such great chemistry on screen together. They are so great. They are just so much fun to watch on screen together. And Bucky, the way they dive into his trauma and letting go and asking for forgiveness from the people he's wronged, the way he's repurposed Steve's notebook, the themes of he feels like he's not good enough, especially because now Sam hasn't taken the shield, so he kind of doubts everything Steve's ever said about him, whereas Steve has been one of his only supporters for the longest time. The way he grapples with his regret when he's confronting Zemo and Nagazami, it's just, it's so great. It's just... I really love what they did with that as well. In the first episode, the therapy scene, um, the very first scene we get with Bucky is probably one of my favorites in the show as well. It's so well done. I really like the therapist as well. I think she's funny. It's super good. It's super good. And I love the way they explored Bucky's trauma and how that kind of complements and parallels everything Sam's going through. The show has a huge theme about perspective. That's something I'm going to talk about a little more, but there's a huge message of perspective. And, you know, the same way no one would understand Sam's struggles with racial tension, no one will understand the specific trauma that Bucky has gone through. And I think that's a really cool detail. And I think the way these two guys talk about their feelings and open up as the series goes on is really inspiring and sort of breaks stereotypical male representation in films and TV. We don't get very many dudes talking it out or apologizing for misunderstanding each other. And it's really refreshing to see. And it gives me a lot of faith in these two characters moving forward and how much I love their relationship. Next up, let's talk about the other end of the spectrum. A shining example of what it means to uphold a lot of toxic masculinity. I'm of course talking about John F. Walker. Now, Wyatt Russell, son of Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn, is phenomenal in this. He starts out as this dude we are supposed to hate and we do hate. I hated him for longer than most people. A lot of people were forgiving him around like episode three or four, and I do feel bad for the dude. That's the thing, is I simultaneously really am bothered by him and annoyed by him in a sort of like umbrage from Harry Potter type way but also there's an element of like I feel bad for the guy who's there deep down but his actions are just so untamed so anger driven this is a guy who's been built up by the government that's another thing here is an element of perspective whereas Steve was not accepted into the military early on and had to kind of earn his way in there and impress people with his good soul John Walker is a shining example of how the military just kind of lets anyone in, but you do feel bad for the guy because it's very clear his service and all his dedication he's put into this has been very painful and trying on him and he just feels this huge weight of responsibility. It's almost as if when the show begins, he already deserves to retire or at the very least do something not involved with the military or the government, but instead he's taking up the mantle of Captain America, the mantle that the government has mistakenly adopted from Sam. And he acts with anger and malice even before Lamar's death, 
this guy is acting out of pure just determination to get things done, I guess, but coming out in the ugliest form. It's really cool and it's really compelling to see unfold. He's easy to hate, but he's also super fun to watch and Wyatt Russell does a phenomenal job with him. And by the time is over, he really does sell me on the whole anti-hero thing. I wouldn't say he earned redemption necessarily, but he definitely earned my support when it comes to seeing him on perhaps the Thunderbolts, which is what might be setting up with Val and potentially the Serpent Society. They're led by Val, played by Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who does a really great job in this and is really hilarious and fun to see on screen. But of course, she might potentially be setting up the Thunderbolts, which is a team of anti-heroes, which contains the US agent, which is of course the mantle that John Walker takes by the end of the series. Um, I believe Zemo is also in there in some iterations of the team, and lots of other kind of more obscure MCU villains, like maybe Justin Hammer or Ghost from Ant-Man and the Wasp. People have talked about maybe them showing up. So that could be setting up a series, I think would be the best way to do that, but maybe even a movie, I'd be down for it. And so if that is potentially where we could see John Walker and Val pop up in the future, that'd be really, really awesome. And maybe even Zemo. And that's a good segue because he's who we're talking about next. Man alive, did they turn Zemo into a crowd pleaser. This guy, prior to this show, was one of the most forgettable MCU villains. I mean, in my opinion, I always remembered him. I thought he was always really cool. I loved how he manipulated the Avengers in Civil War and how that all went down, but he did feel like just a guy. He didn't really feel like Baron Zemo, and there's not too much done to add to that in the show other than him occasionally wearing the mask for apparently no reason, even though it looks really cool. But this dude is so funny and manipulative. He has so many great crowd-pleasing moments. Of course, the infamous dancing scene. He's just super cool, and Daniel Brohl's performance is exceptional. I love him so much, and I really hope Zemo shows up again, and I really assume he will, especially after how much love he's getting from everyone. And I, again, I think it would be likely that he would appear in the Thunderbolts or wherever that team ends up showing up. Next up, Sharon Carter. I've never liked Sharon Carter. I never have. Peggy Carter, on the other hand, for a while, in like the fifth grade, I was like the biggest Peggy Carter stan of all time. Sharon, on the other hand, was not the biggest fan of. And when she's first introduced in the show, I kind of was. I was getting into her. I was like, okay, I see you, Sharon. By the end, she's like infiltrating the government. Some people think she might be a scroll or she could just be, you know, the power broker. We do learn in the finale that she is the power broker. Um, I mean, it's interesting. It's a very different direction for her character than I would have ever expected. If it is actually Sharon and is not a scroll, then I kind of don't like what that says about the legacy of the Carter name, but also maybe I do. Maybe that's a really compelling sort of parallel to Peggy. I'll be interested to see what they do with her next. There's not much to say on her here. I think she's really cool. She has some really awesome action scenes in episode three, one of the highlights of the episode actually. But yeah, she's pretty cool. Not my favorite, but I am honestly really interested to see what they do with her next because there's, even though this is, this seems they have some sort of concrete direction they wanna go, we don't really know what that is and we're not gonna know what it is for a while, but I'll be really interested to see where she pops up next and what she's up to. Next up, the Wakandans. We got some Dora Milaje representation. The one member of the Dora Milaje that was in Civil War at one point, I forget her name unfortunately, but she's the first one that confronts Bucky in the alleyway. We get some really awesome action with them. They are so cool, they are so powerful. I absolutely loved seeing them demolish John Walker. It was a really cool way to just subtly bring the Wakandans in and not have them in the spotlight, but they definitely fit the themes. Again, going back to perspective, and we can talk about that with Zemo and Sharon as well. I didn't, I forgot to mention that with them, but Zemo has a very sort of, he's always been about perspective because he's always been on the bad side of the Avengers. His family was killed in the Battle of Sokovia, and so he kind of hates them for that, and he's very against super soldiers and Hydra and everything that that was going through and the Winter Soldier and whatever, and the stuff they do. Super Serum is really cool, the way they tackle, would you take it if it were you? And then Lamar's like, it only amplifies who the person already is. That was really cool, and the way Zemo destroyed not only the last pieces of Super Serum, but the last super soldiers by the end was really Really cool and a really satisfying way to conclude that sort of arc for him and share in the perspective the power broker thing that's a little more on the nose as far as perspective goes but the wakandans you know you could argue there's the perspective of this is how people see the door melage and this is how people view wakanda which is something we really haven't seen much other than briefly in civil war other than that we've just kind of been in wakanda and we haven't really seen how the outside world reacts to them so that was really cool and felt really natural and awesome and felt like a very comic book thing to just have them show up here and it added a lot to the world building and reminded you that there's a lot more going on on a global scale in the MCU. Speaking of global scales, 
the GRC, and the way this show tackles the blip. And we got a brief look at it in WandaVision. We got a little bit of a taste of it in Far From Home about how the blip had affected people in their lives. But this is a really great explanation of that with the GRC and how they're handling refugees and all the changes and people coming back five years later. And then of course, Carly Morgenthau and the Flag Smashers, the main antagonists of the series, as they are working to bring down the GRC and bring justice and help refugees and people um, in need to no longer need the GRC's assistance and no longer have to fight to live. Really compelling villain. I think Aaron Kellyman did a phenomenal job here. Of course, I'd only seen her before in Solo Star Wars Stories Infus Nest. She was great in that, but she is so good in this. And her downfall from a very passionate leader to a corrupt and just, as Sam says, a misguided teenager is just super cool. You feel really bad for her. You get what she's doing, but of course she does fall off the edge by the end of the series. It was a really compelling argument, you know, to take a look at the GRC and the way it's affected people and the Flag Smashers and how they're standing up against this sort of unfair lifestyle that they've been forced into after the blip. It was really cool to see that not only represented, um, you know, the blip as far as that goes and how that's affecting people and the way they obviously had uh, the super serum in them was really cool, but Carly especially was really awesome and I loved how they wrapped up her story and how they had um, Sam have to carry her back it was really awesome. I don't know. I just really appreciated that and of course there's a huge the theme of perspective is very strong there. The GRC as Sam says doesn't really think about them when they're making these big decisions that are gonna end up affecting them and as Sam says it's all about destroying labels and that has a huge Theme of perspective, people are going to hate Sam for taking up the mantle of Captain America just because he's a black man. He admits that openly. He knows his assumptions of that are true because he's seen it with Isaiah Bradley and the way he was erased from history, limiting the world's perspective on his history. And he knows it in the way the GRC even treats other people and treats refugees as they call them, as they shouldn't even. I shouldn't have even called them that because they're not even that. They're just people struggling, not because even of things they did, but because of reality and the way that has kind of evolved around them. It's a really compelling and interesting theme to tackle, and it ends up kind of bleeding into all the different subplots and is the glue that ultimately holds them together. As far as what's next for these characters and these stories, they did just announce yesterday that a new Captain America movie is coming out with the showrunner Malcolm Spellman in the directing helm, and of course with Sam as Cap, as he should be. And I'm not gonna talk too much about what I think that's going to cover or who's going to bleed into that. I think a lot of what is in this show is going to cross over into that, other than maybe the Thunderbolts. We could see Torres officially take up the mantle of Falcon. Um, originally, at the beginning of this show, I was like, knowing this is just six episodes, they're probably just calling him Torres just as a little Easter egg, which in, in the comics is the man who ends up taking the mantle of Falcon. But now that we know we're getting another Captain America movie, I would not be surprised if he does become Falcon in that film. But more than anything, I'm super hyped to see Cap back in action because Sam is just so cool. The way he utilizes the shield and the wings and all that is so awesome. And obviously, if he gives more speeches like he gave in the finale, I'm all here for it. I'm a huge speech and monologue lover. I adored that scene. It's just so good, man, and it's so great that we're going to get more content with these characters soon because they're a lot of fun to see, and I think they would even be cooler to see on the big screen. So, there you have it, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. I love this show. I had a lot of fun with it, but I do want to know if you did. Did you like this show as much as I did? Did you like it even more than I did? Let me know in the comment section down below. I want to hear your thoughts. As far as WandaVision, you're probably like, Ian, when are you going to talk about WandaVision? Soon, I will. Sometime in the next couple of weeks, I will make a video talking about WandaVision because like I said, it is probably my favorite Marvel project of all time and there's a lot I want to talk about in regards to it. So that'll come eventually. As far as other MCU videos, they're on the way. What else is on the horizon for the channel? The Lego series is going to keep going. The Lego video game retrospective series is going to keep going and the next two episodes should drop within the next Next week and a half some other very similar videos to this lots of just sitting and talking like i said i'm really happy to be back thank you guys so much for supporting and watching these videos it means so much uh but yeah with all that being said thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all later Bye bye